of. I can see the numbers going up. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us in our first webinar in the VIEW series. Um, I'd like to start by introducing our speakers today and also provide you a brief introduction of the series. So I'm Patricia, I'm the Partnerships Director here at VIEW. And for those of you who may not be so familiar with VIEW, um, VIEW is an SSP offering MOs just as JC Deco, a solution to manage and sell their inventory. Today on the panel, we have Dom Kozak, the head of programmatic at JC Deco UK, providing that supply of premium out of home inventory. And also Lee Cutter, VP of sales at Hivestack, which as um, you may already be aware, are leading DSP in the market, enabling marketers to buy digital out of home screens. So as you can see, we have a panel composed of all the sides in the do programmatic ecosystem with VIEW playing the role of the SSP, Hive Stack as the DSP, and JC Deco UK as the media owner. The idea behind the initiative is that we all bring a different perspective and experience to give you that full circle view of, of the ecosystem. Before we begin, I'm gonna quickly cover off a few housekeeping points. Um, as you've probably noticed, the webinar is being recorded for us to be able to share with uh, those who are not able to make it with us today. And we will have a Q&A at the end of the webinar, but you can submit your question via the Zoom Q&A function. Uh, it should be open now and it will be open throughout. So please don't be shy, feel free to, to ask away. Uh, with that done, let's kick it off with an overview of programmatic digital out of home as the uh, first point on the agenda. So we're going to start by setting the scene and look at digital out of home and programmatic throughout through the lens of the future. Uh, digital out of home is pro and programmatic is predicted to evolve in the upcoming year uh, with programmatic digital out of home spending being predicted to increase to 116.5 million by 2023. Uh, and that's actually an increase of almost 55% accounting for 7% of all uh, out of home ad spend. Uh, additionally, we have seen within our state of the nation research that UK executives expect programmatic digital out of home to be included in 54% of their future campaigns. Uh, and that's up from 47% in 2020. What are the elements that can be considered the tailwind behind the growth? Uh, to, to dive in a little more on this, let's have a look on, on the next slide. Uh, we're going to start with a basic definition of what is programmatic. Uh, programmatic refers to the automated buying and selling of ad inventory using software, uh, an SSP and a DSP. Um, digital out of home has always been a powerful creative experience. And now in the context of programmatic buying, it provides flexibilities for brands and media owners, allowing them to plan and execute their strategy uh, smarter and faster. So multiple brands can utilize an advertising location and the content of the ads can be targeted to the specific surroundings or expected audience. It works fast and it, it can change often. Prior to 2020, programmatic out of home was growing in popularity globally, but we have seen this actually being accelerated by, by the pandemic. Um, as brands needed to be more nimble and reactive with, with their messaging than ever before. Uh, the out-of-home evolution is powered by flexibility and database decisioning. So a few points here. Um, while the manual trading elements are more rigid and committed, so fixed locations, uh, rigid creative rules, set plan planning cycles, out of home in a programmatic in the programmatic setting is powered by flexibility and data decisioning so flexible location and impact of buying the changes and evolutions are uh, an evolution are are pushed forward by data and technology and we have a few stats here that highlight just that so automation saves 50 percent of time versus the traditional planning cycles while on the programmatic front, uh, there's 35% more efficient ad spend uh, when buying by audience and hourly. Um, and building on what I've just covered, you'll see uh, in the table on this slide, the key differences between direct versus programmatic trading with the factors uh, on the left being the points of comparison. 
Um, hopefully you can use this to, to derive from it the main differences between direct versus programmatic um, as being the flexibility and re real-time decision-making that a programmatic truly enables in, in digital out of home. And now I will pass it on, uh, on to Lee to cover the next point for today, why programmatic out of home and why now? Take it away, Lee. Great, thanks Patricia. Um, and thanks very much to you for inviting me along for the, their first webinar. So yeah, I'm here to talk about why programmatic uh, and why now. Um, just a little bit about Hivestack first, you may or may not have heard about us, um, but we've actually been around uh, in, in one form or another. <laughs> Uh, for, uh, for a number of years now. So we are first and foremost an out-of-home business, very much born out of automation technology. Um, we, we, we were formed from a business called Ayuda, which sat more on the supply side, um, but this is very much again an out-of-home uh, suite of software, which was very much about making efficiencies in market. Hivestack was actually launched in Canada in 2017. Um, so for an ad tech business, we're relatively mature now. And in fact, now as of 2022, we're actually operational in 24 countries uh, worldwide and expanding uh, every month. Um, we're here obviously today as DSP. We do actually sit across the market. We are a, uh, the, the, the market leading full stack platform. Um, we do operate on the sales side. We have an ad server, header bidder, an SSP. Uh, but today are very much the demand side. But audiences and measurement and data are the crux of everything we do at Hivestack. Um, so yeah, why, why now? I think most programmatic channels have had their moment in the sun, perhaps heralded for a year. We've seen these headlines. It's the year of connected TV. It's the year of digital audio. Um, but perhaps programmatic digital at home has had a more of a, of a longer gestation period. But very much now we've seen the tipping point in the UK. Um, here are the reasons why. Uh, we now just have an equality of, of data, an abundance of data. Uh, Hivesac used mobile location data to create our, our, our custom audiences, but also we're using a variety of data sets be that for, for triggering moments or, or actually just other, helping other clients with their, their various first party data, third party data. We're very much data neutral, uh, whatever needs to be done for the client. Uh, and as Patricia mentioned, uh, the pandemic obviously an awful, awful two years for our sector, but that did see programmatic accelerate. That gave businesses time to think, pause and look at their roadmap. Uh, perhaps decisions which would have taken uh, months or years were done in weeks. And also, again, that kind of agility, that, that fast, fastness to market, which we needed at that type of point in time, uh, was there for, for people to use and see. And also just the explosion of, of connectivity. Uh, we had a campaign for Gucci, which ran last year, which was planned by, by two guys in, in East London, but it was ran across five different uh, countries in three continents. If you have a, a platform, if you have a, a laptop, you have a mouse uh, and you can connect to our platform, you can effectively access all the inventory you, you possibly could need to. And also there are a lot more people buying out of home now. It's not just out of home specialists who are still incredibly valuable, uh, but also we have pure play digital agencies uh, on the channels coming in as well. Marketeers are very much uh, all about brand safety, contextual relevance and viewability. These are the three really key kind of um, areas. And this is something which our, our kind of um, area lends itself to very well. Brand safety, you always have your creative approved by, by both the buy side and the supply side. Contextual relevance is something which will come up quite a lot today. It's about getting that message. Uh, it's a one to many channel, not one to one, but we can be as kind of uh, targeted as we possibly can be to ensure that the right person sees the right ad at the right time or the right people at least. And also viewability as well, you know, it's, it's different to how the online world uh, track that. And critically, also the scale of digital infrastructure. Uh, in the last six years, we've actually seen a five-fold increase in the amount of screens uh, available in the UK. And they're quality screens as well. There's an awful lot of development going on. So the partners such as Deco, who are on the panel today, investing an awful lot in the best locations and the best screens. Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, and again, it's all about tech and data. Um, we now have more and more data insights which really allow ourselves to really uh, target and, and measure uh, campaigns in a lot more sophisticated way. Um, out of home has always perhaps suffered a little bit with measurement and accountability, but now we can offer an end-to-end -end system through programmatic, which allows us to actually use, utilize real business outcomes and, and, and actually see uh, an impact that this particular channel has made. 
again, contextual relevance. You know, it is one to, again, one to many. This is an important part to remember. But again, we are we are really are doing everything we possibly can to use data to make that message as relevant to the people in front of it as possible. An optimization. This is really key. Again, Patricia showed you how, how the classic world operate. Still a very a vital part of our ecosystem. But what you can now do is you can change a message, you can change a location, you can change a strategy within a number of minutes. You haven't got to wait for the next posting cycle, or perhaps you know phoning at every every kind of out of home rep to change something. You can do it almost in real time. Uh, and also, uh, kind of like just again um, uh, building on Patricia's points here, there's, there's some elements here which which really do um, differentiate programmatic from just standard digital out of home. So again, optimization is really really key. You can change that strategy. You can change. You can add media owners. You can change formats. You can change creative strategy. Again, within the platform, with a few clicks for mouse, um, you can do that. With, you know, within 15, 20 minutes. And I think this uh, uh, flexibility, agility, and, and speedness to market that has been really really important. Obviously, during the pandemic but it, it, it will continue to be so as well uh, again if a marketer changes their mind and wants to make a change we can do that very very quickly um, and again again that's uh, important in this, in this day and age also just in terms of quality of life as well for, for people using the, the platform uh, we have all uh, everything in one place effectively so the efficiencies and, and the ease of, of buying uh, aggregation and also reporting uh, are not, not to be forgotten as well uh, anyone who's bought an out-of-home campaign knows that getting post campaign analysis play out reports can, can be a tricky process if, if you're working with six seven eight nine media owners you know that's even tougher so bringing everything into one place uh, being completely bespoke with data and as granular as you need to be is, is really important and it just makes life a little bit easier, uh, which I know we all would uh, benefit and welcome. Now, Hivestack is very much a channel DSP, and you know we are the market leading DSP as we mentioned, but we are completely screen agnostic, uh, and we do welcome kind of cross-channel application. Um, so, very much genre channels are coming to the space, which is which is exciting. But you know, even within out of home, out of home and mobile, very much lend themselves to each other very very easily. And within our platform, uh, we can we can uh, remove lat longs, um, uh, use use uh, mobile IDs, and retarget them in a mobile uh, world as well, which again makes that kind of whole campaign more powerful. And again, that kind of outcomes driven accountability measurement piece. Uh, I'll come on to that a little bit later. But again, this is really kind of like adding another value and adding more value, adding more um, uh, just a benefit to the, to the, to the whole um, process. And again, finally, this kind of un un unparalleled data and targeting, you know, data does come up quite a lot in what we're talking about today, but it's so important and it makes that targeting piece again, uh, just more sophisticated. Next slide, please. Um, and again, this is just a quick, quick look at our, our UI on, on the Hivestack DSP here. This is a heat map uh, in action here on the right-hand side. Um, and it's just a more precise way to reach your audiences out of home. You know, the precision targeting element with the platform, again, we'll go through this in a second. This allows you to, to, to kind of really hone in on that audience. And you'll see here the darker red um, is, is the audience this particular campaign for Intel was looking for as the day progresses. And that changes, obviously, as, as audiences move around London uh, throughout the day. And obviously, if you're just buying a one in six um, loop, um, which still works for some campaigns, but if you're working, you're wanting to really, really hone in on an audience, you want to move as, as they move around as well. So this allows you to be more flexible and uh, just have that benefit there. And obviously mentioned market at scale, um, you know, more and more media owners now have come on board. I think the vast majority of the UK uh, media owner um, landscape are now available through Hivestack, um, which is fantastic. You know, you have not just the, the big roadside and rail and transit uh, media opportunities, but also in some more niche places such as universities and, and gyms and cinemas, et cetera, offices. Um, again, that market scale as, as, as audiences move is important. And again, driving real business outcomes as well, uh, attributing lift and awareness, consideration, intent, uh, and in-store visitation and programmatic exposures. So just looking at, kind of at the various ways you can target as well here. Um, so proximity geofence, this is simply where you have a point of interest, uh, you set a radius, and then you service inventory in that area. You know, that, that's a, a fairly, fairly simple, but quite a powerful way if you want to target an audience close to your point of business, um, whether you're a retailer or, or the like, you know, that's a really simple way we can do that. 
custom audiences that's going into our kind of like more of our, our mobile location data so for example if you're looking for an auto in tender audience we can actually geofence in platform around audi volkswagen mercedes bmw dealerships in a certain area and start to capture those device ids in an anonymous and gdpr compliant fashion that go in there and then retarget them as a group when they move around uh, kind of like again in real time but use it, using uh, previous behavior uh, as a barometer for when we activate um, so that's a really kind of clever way of doing that because you're actually better, you're actually targeting real behavior uh, as opposed to perhaps just demographics but but you know demographics still have a place a part to play and predefined audiences which is another area we now offer in the, in the dsp is where we can utilize the likes of again uh, coffee lovers or potentially fashionistas and um, we can use a blend again of using real data from mobile location data or in fact mobile behavior uh, the kind of apps that a user has been using uh, on their phone as well so do a blend of that and also demographics again Cross-stream retargeting, we mentioned that before. Data triggers I'll come into shortly. I think previously in the out-of-home sector, we've done this very well with likes of weather. You know, if it's if it's warm, we trigger a, a, an ad for an ice cream. You know, if it's hay fever season we, and pollen's high, we'll, we'll put an ad for a period on up. Um, but, but now we can do a, a huge amount more than that. And we're really excited to talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides time. And in journeys, this is something which is soon to come to the Highstack DSP. And this is where we're literally looking at a point of, point of interest and then looking at the most common journeys there from, uh, from kind of like where you live and essentially then targeting those screens along that journey. But just a little bit more on the audiences here, uh, as I say, and, and, the, and throughout, it's whether you need a precision or an ease, uh, more broadcast targeting depends on which of those you'll, you'll choose at the time. Thanks. Um, and these are some of the previous audiences. Again, I kind of like touched on this a little bit here, but you know, you can lay out and you can build a campaign where you can go. Actually, I want to see people who actually have been into um, uh, dealerships, but also as auto enthusiasts, and maybe you want them to be uh, male. Um, you can build uh, people who've been to Tesco's, but also group grocery shoppers, for example. Again, layering these different audiences uh, to build a campaign. So moment targeting is something we're really, really proud about at, at Hivestack, and we've launched this recently. So this is reaching consumers in real time when the right state of mind um, which used to be really impossible in a one-to-many environment, but now we can with moment targeting via our uh, customer event triggers. Uh, we can authentically connect in a more human, memorable, and contextually relevant way. Um, and some examples of that on the next slide. Uh, these are these are some kind of like ones within certain categories which we have ready. And again, we have we have partnered with certain um, part, um, data partners such as Flux and a few others there as well who we've got. So, for example, rather than just weather, we can actually so rather than just temperature, we can now look at kind of humidity. We can look at wind direction. We can look at pollen count. Um, we can actually layer onto that within within lifestyle. We can look at soil moisture. Um, what are the most optimal conditions for barbecue season? That's not just about weather. It's about a number of other things as well. We can look at various sports sailing conditions. What's the perfect conditions for that? Health and beauty. Uh, we can look at where when the most the days are most relevant for um, getting migraines, for example, or for colds. It's layering on real science, real kind of data to build an actual kind of uh, a, a case for a moment to be triggered on. Uh, and again, that's available in platform. Um, we can also do truly bespoke um, triggers as well. So, for example, in the World Cup in 2022 coming up, there may be a brand ambassador for Harry Kane. Uh, he scores a goal. We can literally trigger every screen in, in London or uh, in the UK uh, with that particular good, goodwill message there. So, you know, again, this is becoming trigger, becoming off the, off the peg to an extent, but also completely bespoke. Next slide. Um, and then finally, on to measurement here as well, which again is really, really important here. So you'll see here just, uh, just a quick snapshot of our platform here where we actually do build our, our kind of um, brand uplift studies within the platform. So rather than having to sift through 60 pages um, of, of, kind of keynote presentation, you can actually make this really dynamic and interactive here. So this is a particular one for Mazda where we can actually look at a control versus the exposed um, sample and look at where ad, ad recall lift was, look at what the aided ad recall was, brand perception, whatever metrics uh, the marketer needs or the agency needs, we can build a study for you. Um, so again, this is this is really kind of like pioneering stuff here. 
Um, and actually, we actually want to go, if you let go to the next slide, we're actually trying to build measurement through the funnel. And again, something through, something out of home we haven't been able to do before. We're very, very good at uh, brand awareness. We can put lots of big ads up and you know make, make people aware of the, the new car launch or the new burger that's out here, but actually be able to track through to intent uh, to actually getting uh, to getting uh, consumers into store. And then conversion has been very difficult before. But again, through the tools we offer in our measurement suite, we can now do full funnel measurement also. Um, and last couple of slides here. So I just want to have a look at New Look, which is a, a campaign we ran fairly recently. And this was uh, the first end-to-end -end campaign in the UK. And, and by that, I mean that we actually built custom audiences. Uh, we did measurement. We even did kind of open exchange, which without getting into the weeds a bit, is, is very much rather than picking a particular um, uh, media plan, you're actually following the audience based on wherever they go and activating there. So really pioneering stuff again. And obviously this bridge programmatic and style in the UK. Um, so just some headline facts on this one. Uh, the core objective was to increase brand awareness and footfall for uh, their autumn winter collection by driving core audience into physical store locations, um, as well as online as well. So we actually used our custom audiences to, to build four key audiences here. We used new look key locations. So again, we would geofence those stores, capture those device IDs and build that there. Then we looked at the main competitive sets as well, uh, as you would do if you want to try and not only just keep your customers, but you want to build new ones as well. Then we can actually look at frequent high street retail shoppers again, using that kind of data we've got from our, from our kind of um, predefined segments. And then also we're able to identify certain stores which were uh, co uh, carrying the Emory collection and operate that from a, from a, a proximity geofence perspective. The results are fantastic. We actually managed to deliver nearly nearly double the uh, the impressions that they required. In fact, over double what they were, what they what they had planned. Uh, over fifteen hundred plus screens. And in terms of the results, there you'll see here over six point three percent, a three six point three two percent install visitation increase. And then a couple of key metrics there as well: sixty seven percent lift across the, the competitors and seventy three percent lift over that new look and Marie store as well. So that was all from the footfall traffic we did. The the customer, the client, are delighted, and we look forward to welcoming them back for the next campaign soon. Next slide, please. Uh, and just a few, a few obviously we, we also get how beautiful in programs we can't forget the fact how beautiful uh the out of home screens look and this is really strong creative in a variety of environments there so really really pleased with this campaign um, and that's it for me um so i will um pass it over to dom for, to give you the view from uh, from media owner's side thank you very much lee and uh thank you for inviting me along today for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dom, I'm, I'm Head of Programmatic at JC Leco UK, uh, and I look after JC Leco's programmatic clients, both agencies and brands, helping them to navigate their way to success in programmatic digital out of home, using all the tools that we have here at JC Leco, and, and also several years of experience being the first major media owner to launch our programmatic offering um, in the UK. The introduction of programmatic technology into digital out of home has opened up a huge range of new possibilities for both digital out of home buyers and digital marketers more traditionally focused on online or mobile. Too many possibilities for me to cover in the 10 or 15 minutes I have today, but I'm going to focus on how to supercharge your brand marketing efforts in programmatic digital out of home. To do that, I'm going to talk through our journey to being 100% programmatic and what that means for marketers how programmatic digital out of home delivers across the board as the perfect blend of data and creativity. And finally, I'm going to take a look at the future of programmatic digital out of home and what that may hold. So if we jump onto the next slide, over the past four years, JC Deco has made significant investments in technology. And today, 99% of our digital inventory is available to buy programmatically. This was a project driven by increased demand for digital programmatic solutions from our brand and agency clients. For buyers, this means you can reach almost anyone anywhere. At airports, you'll find an affluent, excited, early adopting audience, 90% of whom are ABC ones. Roadside presents you with an opportunity to reach day-to-day -day commuters and longer distance travellers, many of whom are, connect who are connected passengers with a reach of 1.3 billion per week. Supermarkets provide buyers with a chance to target consumers in a ready-to-buy mindset, with an audience 13% more likely to have children in the home. At railways, you can reach another connected but more diverse audience. And in shopping malls, you'll find a younger audience, 82% more likely to be that hard to reach 18 to 34. 
programmatic technology that is now at the heart of our digital offering has enabled our clients to use what has traditionally been a brand building medium to deliver full funnel results to the question that I can already see in the chat. But the question we must ask ourselves is what does this mean for marketers? And what does this mean for marketers when thinking about marketing strategy? Let's look at four examples of how different brands at different stages of their marketing development can harness the power of programmatic digital out of home to deliver compelling stories to consumers that deliver tangible results. If we jump onto the next slide, we can see in the top left corner, priming audience for engagement, uh, priming audience audiences for engagement in other channels. For big brands that advertise across multiple channels, programmatic digital out of home could be used to prime online audiences more effectively compared to both cookie-based and cookie-less online advertising. By seeking out online audiences in out-of-home environments using a combination of audience, behavioural and first-party data, brands can make both online and digital out-of-home budgets work harder in a way that is measurable. For example, we work with ASOS uh, in this way to deliver across various boroughs shown to be their key demographic. This campaign resulted in a 10% uplift in brand awareness and an impressive 1% increase in overall market share within these areas. Programmatic also helps brands react to change and be more creative. Many brands have product lines that have extra appeal to consumers under very specific conditions, such as during high temperatures. Programmatic campaigns, as Lee mentioned, can be set up to run when certain weather conditions are met. For example, we have campaigns running now for Aperol, Thatcher's, Copperberg, amongst others, ready to activate on those warm summer afternoons, just like yesterday. We've also seen clients use weather triggers to change their creative, swapping from a vibrant blue background during colder times to a bright red background when it's sunny to really make the ad stand out in the context of the surroundings. A study that we conducted in partnership with PosterScape revealed that on average there's an 18% increase in brain response when displaying content that was relevant using either the location, the weather, the time or a live update as a stimulus. Telling a story in the right context captures the most attention, an increasingly important metric right now. There can also be lower cost of entry with um, programmatic digital out of home. For smaller brands with limited budgets, the introduction of programmatic digital out of home breaks down this traditional barrier to entry. Being able to pinpoint the audiences you want to reach, when, where, and how much you want to pay for each ad means that small brands can invest in out of home much sooner and benefit from the brand building effects typically reserved for the biggest brands. Programmatic also gives marketers the ability to personalize messaging. Research bodies used online webcam eye tracking to measure ad recall and rank creatives. Over 280 respondents viewed a walkthrough footage of a shopping mall with six digital out of home screens, each featuring different brands advertising. This part of the research demonstrated that advertising at relevant moments with relevant content attracted attention to the advertising and improved brand and creative scores. The most relevant creatives drove time spent viewing the ad by 60%, spontaneous ad awareness by 17%, and consideration, recommendation, and trust metrics were also improved by an average of 6%. The power of programmatic personalization by cohort can once more make marketeers' pounds work harder. If we move on to the next slide, please. Brand marketing is at a tipping point. The pace of change will never be this slow again. Due to the ever-changing landscape, we at JC Deco believe in the power of test and learn. We believe in this to ensure brands are getting the very best. We are here to help you challenge your thinking, to push boundaries and deliver superior results. The integration of programmatic technologies and digital out of home has resulted in more data and more creativity than ever before in out of home. To help brands get the very most out of their programmatic digital out of home campaigns, we have brought together three in-house specialist teams. The programmatic team are here to help and guide you through the inventory available and best practices to reach your audience and achieve your campaign goals. Our data solutions team have at their fingertips a wealth of data from a multitude of sources that enables us to help you ensure that your campaigns are planned and measured using top-notch consistent data for the most accurate results. Creative possibilities in out-of-home have exploded with the addition of programmatic. 
Digital capabilities include being able to show an image, animation, motion, video, or HTML dynamic creative responding to a variety of data. This also opens up the ability to use and repurpose your digital ads onto public media and carve out a new brand building strategy that utilizes the best of both worlds. Our creative solutions team are always on hand to help you make the biggest visual impact. So as we uh, draw towards the end of my section, what does the future hold for programmatic digital out of home? Now that 99% of our inventory is available to buy programmatically, we're working on ways to add more data, more insights, more creativity. Just a couple of examples of where we're expecting things to grow are shown on this slide. More and more custom APIs, as referenced by Lee from the Hivestack team earlier, to integrate with an increasing array of first party, second party and third party data. The resurgence of the QR code, who'd have thought that would come back? Feel free to scan this one as an example. And finally, an increasing trend in augmented reality as just one element of the metaverse. But that being said, I'm sure the rest of the panel will also have an opinion on this. So I'll encourage you to get in touch for more information. And with that, I'll hand back to Patricia for the Q&A. Thanks, Tom and Lee. Some really good, good points made there, uh, which um, hopefully has given our audience some great food for thought. We have now officially opened the floor up to questions, and we do have a few that have come in. Um, so I'm going to start uh, reading them out, and then we can, we can take uh, turns on answering them. Uh, the first one we have in is, is programmatic out of home only primarily uh, good for branding? Um, I, I think throughout the presentation, we have seen various examples from, from each of, of the angles that um, it's, it's, it's not the case. A programmatic out of home now answer to, to, to the full funnel and to the different objectives that advertisers might, might have. Uh, Lee, do you want to chime in on that one? No, I mean that, that it's uh, that's a very good summary of it. I think I think branding, in fact, from programmatic is, is one of those we actually have to build a case for sometimes because occasionally for branding you want to go more broadcast. But absolutely, as I say, with the Gucci example, we have proof that we can do that for, for branding on, on scale. But yeah, uh, throughout the whole the whole um, throughout throughout being as accountable and measure, adding measurement to the mix, we're able to do more call to action, which is which is obviously a really important area to that as well. Um, I've, I've seen question there about whether whether it's I don't want to jump ahead, sorry, but for uh, SMEs as well, you know, we, we can actually build whatever the, the campaign needs to be for particular audiences as well. So, you know, that, that opens it up beyond, beyond branding. It may well be a very specific uh, use case for, for an audience targeting situation. Um, so whether it's, whether it's audience or whether it's a need for measurement, I think we can, we can kind of like create, cross all those different boundaries. I've, uh, I've got a little opinion on that as well. No one would be uh, surprised to hear who knows me on the call. Um, I think what's really, really interesting about out of home, it, probably more generally than the, the programmatic out of home, is I think historically, I think the, the branding side of it has been understood and accepted. And I certainly think actually that that kind of last touch point of sale activation as well with proximity to store for, for bricks and mortar locations like our, our supermarket inventory. Again, I think that's, um, you know, that's a pretty robust understanding of that in market. I think what's more interesting actually those kind of middle funnel metrics like consideration um, i'm thinking about a case study that, that i was actually writing up a piece on yesterday for that we did with ug and we saw that consideration metric in the middle of the funnel shift by 32 percent using programmatic digital out of home so it really is a full funnel channel i think the, the the challenge and where we can help assist marketeers is how do you use the the power of the tools to get the best result for your campaign objectives. We have the toolkit, and now we need to work with, with essentially media buyers to ensure that we're delivering on the specific campaign objective. And I think that uh, that's actually a good point for, for our next question, Dom, if you can add, elaborate a bit more. We have a question on how can, um, um, how can triggers be used in, in campaign planning, for example? I think it, it references good the toolkit and, and what you were uh, talking about. Just yeah. Now. Absolutely. So again, this is really where the tech comes into this, right? So partners, buy side partners like, like Hivestack and other DSPs in market, I think Hivestack are probably most advanced when it when it when it comes to triggers. Uh, they they can help you from a technical perspective actually deploy those triggers. But again, I think we need to go back to what is the campaign objective. If your campaign objective is to um, build branding for an FMCG brand then potentially triggers are not the right thing unless that brand has some, um, has some relevance to an environmental or localized trigger. But then saying that, if your, um, 
uh, if your brand is a you know ice cream, for example, then it's the, the, the hot weather trigger. But actually, even more than that, the, the kind of triggers that can be utilized now um, can be things like spiking for, for sales of certain categories in certain areas. So if you're, you know, whatever that category is, you could use um, use that sort of trigger. It could be um, something as, as diverse um, as maybe even sales dropping in a certain area for that product category. I don't know if you've got got an opinion on that, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think it's a, it's a really good question, actually, because I think what you want to let's use an example of, of hay fever, um, something I suffer from. So, you know, hay fever will use a trigger and it will set the, the type of pollen, if it's grass pollen, tree pollen, etc. And you have a range of, you know, five to, to low pollen. Um, and I think if you were going to go in the active and go, I just want to trigger when it's at the highest, you know, I don't think you're going to get the best out of, out of a campaign. What I would suggest that you want to do when you're doing campaign planning there is you potentially want to have a baseline, a basic line item almost always on that is there in the background reminding you of, you know, this is where you want to, you know, this is hay fever season, be, be active, be, buy it when you're in the next shop. But then when you do have that kind of like medium to high levels of pollen, when perhaps it is more pertinent and it's more prominent, um, certainly for those who suffer, it's that reminder. And then it's that peak, you know, let's let's go out and buy more impressions, let's serve, you know, serve more ads there. So you almost have that under, underlying kind of like, don't forget. And then at those key contextual moments, you're saying actually go out now and, and really do buy. So I would say you want to layer uh, triggers. Um, we always talk about being smarter, not smaller. Um, so again, it's, it's just building that campaign to make it more contextually relevant at those, at those key moments. Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, we have another uh, question that references the, the measurement piece. So we have Sarah asking, how can you measure football? For example, yep. someone sees site and goes into store within what sort of time frame can it be measured? Yeah, um, I guess I'd pick that one up again. Again, look, it's, it's bespoke. This is this is an in-store visitation measurement that we offer. Um, what we basically do, because again, it's all mobile device IDs. It's not people. It's it's anonymized, but we can still see where that mobile device ID resurfaced. So every screen has a view shed that we know, um, and, and we know if you're exposed or if you were just a part of the control panel. So from that exposed site that went past a you look ad, let's say, when it played, they had the opportunity to see that ad. And then we can actually see if that if that's that mobile device ID was later observed within a store because we'll geofence that and we'll capture those device IDs there. So in terms of the time period, look, you can set that whenever you want. You know, I would say you want to try and keep it quite tight whilst that met that that adds still in memory. Um, but you can you can switch it on and off across the campaign there. But essentially, this is this is saying that when there is an audience that were exposed to it, and is there a higher propensity for that audience to have been later seen in a store? So that's what we'll create. And again, it is bespoke. So um, more than happy to pick that up offline if if, if Sarah would like some more information on that. Um, but yeah, that's that's the, that's the crux of it. Cool, brilliant. Thank you, Lee. Um, and also, um, Sarah was also asking for a bit more details about how does the weather triggering work. Uh, more specifically, how localized you, you can get with a campaign. So, for example, you're running a national campaign and you want to show uh, um, an ad when the weather is hot. How, how, how localizing can you get with that one? Okay, I guess that's for me again. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're, we, um, we're always trying to get this as, as kind of like um, uh, focus as possible. So, the, m many of the triggers we can do at screen level. Um, so that literally does go down to that, but then some of them also kind of at city level or kind of district level, should we say. So it does depend on the level of the trigger that you want. But again, you know, we are continually trying to push the boundaries. And, you know, I think, whereas you, you might not think there's much of a difference between switch street to street, but I'd certainly say, look, South London, for example, you're raining, there should be a message there rather than it being a, a London, across all of London there. So that we're trying to get this as, as focused and laser focused as we can. Um, and, you know, street, street uh, screen level is certainly the, the ambition for all of our, our moments. Yes, I personally prefer a sunny London focus than a rainy London focus. But yeah, that's, the, that's the dream. For that one. Uh, cool. We have another question, which I think uh, I'm going to throw to Dom. Uh, is digital out of home suitable for small, medium sized businesses? Yeah, I mean, what a what a great question. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely, it absolutely is. I think if you if you think back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, those those kind of traditional perceived barriers to entry aren't there. I think also as well when you were when you were a, a small medium sized business, um, kind of you want the accountability of every pound that you're putting into your media spend. A programmatic digital at home really does help with that, especially when combined with with other channels. I would say. Um, so yeah, it's, it's absolutely great. I think the, in terms of coverage within the UK, the digital footprint is about 78% and the vast majority of that across media owners is, is able to buy programmatically. So 
or able to be bought programmatically. So if you're a bricks and mortar location, then great. You can do that. You, you can you know do the kind of traditional proximity to your bricks and mortar location. You can also measure that, and you can also kind of follow that audience around. Uh, you know, not in a creepy way. You can, you can target that audience that may be relevant for for going into that bricks and mortar location. If you're not a bricks and mortar location, then again, this really, you know, programmatic digital out of home gives that kind of bespoke and finite and granular audience targeting to make those make those marketing pounds work that hard, that little bit harder, and making sure that you are targeting your, you know, reaching your target audience within this context. Cool. Makes sense. Thank you, Dom. Uh, and I think, unless I'm mistaken, we have gone through almost all the questions oh no we have a new one um and i think that this one actually relates to the points we oh, all of us were, were touching throughout the presentation um how would you use programmatic digital out of home as part of a multi-channel campaign i think uh, lee maybe you can start off on that point and, and dom you can you can build build on it as well yeah i mean i think depending on the the if, if out of home is a lead channel, um, you know, I think I still think using a channel DSP is very much the the, the, the way forward because of the level of sophistication you can get. Um, and you know, we we are still streets ahead of, of I think kind of omnichannel DSPs from an out of home perspective. Um, if you do have, need to have one data set that, that flows across various um, channels, um, you know, on the channels have started to move into the area. We have started to connect with them as well. So I guess it all depends on, on how important the out of home element to the campaign is. Um, I would say each campaign is slightly different, but certainly the, the aim certainly, you know, is to connect everything. That's the, that's the dream of omnichannel marketing to connect all that together. So we're there. It's at the start of the journey of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I'd say just have a conversation about your, your particular use case. I think uh, I think interestingly on this one, we probably need to, to for the fundamentals of this, we probably need to go back at almost a decade, or in fact, probably more than a decade now, and actually just talk about audience measurements. You know, in the UK specifically, we brought in Root. Um, you know, all the, the media owners and, and the media buyers in the UK brought in Root, which for those of you who don't know, it's our joint industry currency. Um, it's the you know the largest passive GPS study of its kind. It's how we define our audience. So even that as a starting point was really kind of how campaigns could start to become on the channel because you're starting to talk in the same language as other channels, as digital channels, as CTV, as mobile, etc. So I think that's the first thing is to look at your metrics, see where you can, um, you know, see where you can get parity. So you may not even need a, a, an on-channel DSP. That being said, there is, as Lee's alluded to, value in working with an omni-channel DSP if you're particularly heavy on those on those other channels, uh, and that can real, really bring a strength in data and be able to see that kind of user journey and also that kind of eventual um, conversion as well. That can be a real real strength in the measurement. But then, as Lee said, there is a um, uh, a benefit to using a point solution or a channel DSP if you want to really focus on the out of home element and working with partners like Hivestack and others in market, you'll be able to export and extract a lot of that data from the platform that you can then overlay and compare to those other channels. So on the channel, absolutely, I think is a great way forward for marketing in general. Does it need to be through a uh, through a single platform? There are benefits to that but it doesn't have to be that way. And that is specifically because that data is there to compare, contrast and overlay and measure. Cool, thank you. Uh, we have a few more questions coming in. Actually, we are on fire this morning. Um, do you need specialist knowledge to buy programmatic out of home? How um, do you, Lee and both Dom have seen this uh, a change with with the rise in programmatic and, and out of home. What do you think that opens up? I think um, if I can kick off with that, Dom. So actually, I want to link that to the, the question beneath it. It says the, the main challenges for programmatic. So I think I think some of the challenges are the fact that it is new. And it seems scary. Uh, it seems complex at times when you first get into it. But I think once you do uh, work with partners like ourselves, like with you, um, you know, the co have obviously invested heavily in, in programmatic and, and have specialists in, in house as well. So, you know, I think having working with a partner really does take away that kind of um, that need and, and that challenge as well. Um, you know, we're here to, to help. We're here to make the, the journey as easy as possible, handhold all the way. 
um, you know, when you do look at it as a as a new opportunity, when you've been in out of home for years and you know how to to, to navigate through that, look, it can seem quite daunting. But we're here to break it down into into uh, you know as small chunks, if you like. Um, so I would say that you do need to, to, some programmatic knowledge, but you know we're here to, to give that and add that. You know, high state, You know, I, I joined high state two years ago as first person in a mere, very much an out of home person with very limited programmatic experience, but we have hired throughout and getting different um, specialist areas uh, and now we have a you know a full knowledge uh, you know font of a font of knowledge that we can offer to, to partners so you know we're here to help with that and i think you know challenge is that you know you still have got a, a few of the, some of the market that are that are a little bit wary of that but you know in the last you know six to twelve months we've seen so many new partners coming to the fore from different elements whether it's kind of b2b agencies full network agencies digital agencies independence whatever it might be and we're working with them in different ways we have a great client services team at hivestack again who are there to help through a managed service or self-service or a hybrid to start with so yeah i think that's hopefully combined two questions there um and answered that quite well but um yeah tom i'm sure you'll have another thought yeah well, I, 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 i've always got a thought Lee, as you know um i think <laughs> i think on this one um do you need specialist knowledge to buy programmatic out of home no you don't i think if you're experienced within you know within dsps you can sit down and buy a programmatic out of home campaign however to get the best out campaign as lee said i would suggest just you know find the find a partner to work with whether it be media owner side or whether it be be on the buy side or, or, or um, middleware such as a few there are now i think a big big difference in the uk compared to sort of three or four years ago there are now a series of experts in agency in the tech world on the media owner side who almost to a person are absolute evangelists for the channel um such as myself such as lisa patricia who'd be happy to work with you and happy to guide you through those kind of first campaigns and, and really kind of give that advice to make the most out of your out of your marketing investment um so i think that's kind of the 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 can it be can it be done do you need specialist knowledge um i think from a challenger's perspective um, I think probably the biggest challenge we've got is we've kind of been hiding our light under a bushel for the last few years um obviously the pandemic didn't Help. But the amount of campaigns that have kind of run through our platforms um, collaboratively over the last few years is actually massive. And we probably haven't talked about it enough. Um, so there are lots of pockets of experience and knowledge out there, but it's kind of been a, a bit of a closed group. And I think certainly 2022 is the year of programmatic digital out of home. We want to share that knowledge and talk about it a lot more. I mean, just to give you an idea of scale, um, in 2021 with JCDCO UK, we had 155 brands run programmatically. So that gives you, gives you an idea of the market and its growth. Uh, and this year, I've not punched the numbers yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're, if we're almost at that number already. Cool, thank you both. Uh, let me have a quick look on other questions. I think we touched on everything in the Q&A section. I've seen one coming in through the chat, which touches a bit on, on, on the challenges as well, but it's more angled towards the increase in, in what, what is the challenge in, uh, to increase programmatic uh, adoption right now. Um, Lee, do you want to start as well? Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's, a, it's a similar similar question there. I think we need to kind of scale um, scale a bit more now because we've had a lot, a lot of partners who are kind of like dipping their toe in, showing interest, um, maybe kind of signing up as a partner there, but needs to scale it and working out which kind of campaigns we can do. Um, because I think, again, some of the questions we've had through, it's interesting because it's almost like the, the, the journey I've had in the last two years. It's been those kind of questions. It's like, you know, which ones are right? Which ones do we scale with? So, you know, it's great getting a partner to dip their toe in, but then we want to scale that. We want to have bigger campaigns more often. Um, and then obviously prove its worth as well. You know, we need to build more com more case studies. I think every time we sit down with with, with Dom or the team there or, or the guys at View, we, we always talk about, hey, let's do some case studies. So, you know, I would urge anyone who's watching today and would like to do it, you know, we'd love to work with you and actually, you know, start to create some of these case studies together because I think that will really help. Um, but I think that's the that's, that's one of the biggest barriers. I think it's just, it's, just, it's just scaling it, getting the resource to scale it. But in terms of the actual... Um, ecosystem now you know we've got enough we've got enough inventory we've got enough data in play now um it's just us getting getting out there being brave and, and going for it i guess together i think just just adding to that and i'm going to talk about challenges that we've overcome a little bit here so i think again if you if we go back a couple of years or if we go back kind of four years to our kind of launch with with, with you programmatically um you know 
really JCDCO UK were the, were the only scaled media owner available. And that's great, you know, we're 44% of the market um, from, a, from a digital impression standpoint. Uh, but really, if you want to broadcast campaign and national reach, you need other media owners to be on board. And I think what's great is to see the kind of the whole industry lean in, um, Clear Channel with their broadside reach offering, um, the media owners such as Ocean, who are on, um, uh, on the Hive Stack SSP, really means that you can actually truly scale a progress digital out of home campaign now. I think it's about 96% of, of digital inventory in the UK can be bought via, via an SSP uh, and DSP, so programmatically. I think that's been a, a, you know, a massive leap forward uh, and we'll see that drive growth in 2022 and beyond. Yeah, and I think from my point of view, it's it's you you have the opportunity to scale, but in a very or highly customized way. So tailored to the objective and the advertiser, or truly responding to the brands, uh, truly putting the the brand's message out there. So I think it's very much the test and learn approach that Dom you were talking in in your slide, which is kind of the, the challenge because there's a lot of education and the more options you have, the more you need to harness the data and understand what's the best decision that comes out of that. But that's that's there where the opportunity actually lies. So 100% on that one. Um, and I see quickly. Uh, oh, uh, we have another one on the measurement, which is more towards um the future so a bit of future thinking towards uh, the end of the webinar um how do we see measurement evolving uh moving forwards i think lee you were touching on that a bit on on your yeah, no, I, mean, I think you know me measurements move forward significantly already and you know for, for me we we want to work with data partners that will be able to kind of deliver new you know funnel kind of measurement and accountability um options there really so you know install visitation wasn't wasn't something we did until recently brand uplift as well but you know we have started to touch on things like offline to online uh, where we can we can work with people like Bumbora or Tapad, where we can actually start to look at where the um, the uh, ad was seen offline, what happened online afterwards. So you know when you go out to your office, do you, do you act upon it with your laptop or whatever, and trying to match mobile device IDs to cookies. So that that's one route forward there. But we're always looking to to kind of come, have conversation with partners. We've always got a roadmap that's expanding in this area. So you know, and we're also we rely on, on partners as well to kind of like share what they need. Um, and yeah, we can take this to the product team. So, you know, again, it's a conversation really rather than, uh, than us just dictating the future. Yeah, Dom, how do you see that evolving from the media owner's perspective? Yeah, I think I think the true answer is more, um, just more measurement in general. I think we, the tools are there were pretty much there. I think that that kind of final nut to be cracked is that um, offline to online conversion. There are solutions in market and I think that will become more ubiquitous. Um, I don't think we're going to go too much deeper than that because you know we're, we're moving into it hopefully into a privacy first world which is something that out of home is so good at and I don't think we want to, 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 to take away from that. I think as well there's an acceptance in the kind of more, more traditional programmatic or traditional um, online or digital world that maybe actually we've been measuring the wrong things um, historically, um, things like click free rate. So I think that these, um, uh, these kind of perhaps what have historically been perceived as softer metrics are going to become more important. I think attention um, is going to be absolutely massive and, and, you know, kind of scoring channels for attention and activating against that. I think that will form part of the future. Um, the ever important brand studies, uh, but obviously that's not always the um, uh, not always the campaign objective. And then obviously, as, as Lee's mentioned um, uh, earlier, that offline to online conversion, I think, is going to form a big part of the future as well. Thank you, Dom. Uh, we had another question coming in through a Q&A, uh, conscious of time as well. So we have time for this one. So is digital out of home traded using real time bidding? Uh, Lee or Dom, do you wanna chime in on that one? Should I take that one, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a little in joke between us. So, um, Yes, is, is the answer. So open RTB is, is the protocol that's used. Um, currently, a lot of the media in the UK is um, uh, is purchased at a fixed rate. So whatever you bid, you'll always clear and win at that pre-agreed fixed rate with known buyers. Um, talking about the future, I think that the ecosystem, the tech is there. We'll be moving to a much more biddable ecosystem uh, in the near future. I would have thought we see it in other markets, such as the Netherlands, is kind of fully fully biddable and fully, fully auctioned out there already. Um, it's a 
slightly more advanced or, or mature market in, in, from, a, from a UK perspective. I think we need to be honest and well, we do need to be honest and upfront about that kind of real time element. Although the bidding and buying is in real time, in out of home, the display is still, you know, 15 minutes to an hour after that, after that auction happens. Um, but, you know, that is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Uh, you know, we, we expect that to be within, you know, within seconds within the next sort of 12 months. Yeah. It's, it's not it's obviously not the same as as, as real time is in, in the online world but things like moments you know that is a way that we, we are you know continually working with our partners to get that down to as as, as real time as as possible um i think we know where we are as, as kind of dom said we've moved we've moved hugely towards that area but you know there will always be some some reasons some some elements that can't be true real time but but certainly in terms of activating based on something that's happening in the world at a given time you know that is real time cool. Thank you both. I think uh, we are good to wrap up for today. Um, so um, thank you so much for spending your morning with us and please feel free to, to get in touch. You have the details here. Um, and also don't forget about the next webinar in the series where we'll, we'll be covering the uh, omni-channel out of home uh, with a new special guest. That's the 30th of June. I think that relates to a lot of questions we, we've seen in the Q&A. So don't miss out that, that one and you'll, you'll receive an invitation soon. Um, so on that note, thank you so much to my co-panelists. Thank you everyone for joining and have an amazing rest of your day, hopefully with a sunny London. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone. Thanks Patricia. Thank you.